Well, welcome back to another episode of Crossing Broadcast. I am your host, Kyle Pagan. We are glad you joined us today. The Eagles are in the motherfucking Super Bowl, Kev, and we just rationale out the shit out of it all freaking season. I don't think, well, <laughs> do we ever waver? I don't think we ever wavered. I, I yeah. don't think we were ever like, this team's a Super Bowl team, but I remember one thing that I said was that if they don't make the Super Bowl, this year was a failure just because of everything that was going to have to come up with paying Jalen, paying free agents and everything, and just having a, a, a QB on a, on a rookie contract. How you feeling, first of all? Sorry, that's on me. No, I feel great, man. This is fantastic. I'm just coming up for air now. I had that kind of a messed up uh, kiddo drop off at daycare today, and then I, I rushed in Ernest Owens' column, and then I did a meeting, and then I threw like three stories up on the website. So I'm kind of exasperated Ooh. <clears throat> as we start this one. I get my blood pressure down. But no, man, I mean, there was never a doubt, right? I mean, we we carried the torch for Posadelphia this year, but not effusive <laughs> and like overblown Posadelphia, just Who's like up ra- rational, rational Tuesday, rational Tuesday, basically like was the uh, the backdrop for this entire Eagles season in terms of of media coverage. You know, we never we never strayed from the path. We said it after week one. What do we say? They're not losing to to Jared Goff, Jared right? Goff, They're not losing to Jared Goff, right? And then when they went eight and one, so okay. Oh my God, they lost a game. So what? You know, we. Offered, I think, pretty fair and balanced takes on Jonathan Gannon and their prospects for the Super Bowl and all that stuff. And I, you know, yeah, you got to stay the path, man. And we did. So it's only it's only fair and balanced here on on crossing broadcast. Pat yourself on the back. I'll pat myself on the back. All right, we could go on a victory tour. We could go on a victory lap here. We can. We can can, can, can go on Twitter if we wanted and say, "Oh, I I remember when you, you know, said shit about me when they're eight and one. I remember when you wanted to fire again." And I remember we're not going to do that. Yeah, I remember when Jockey Cade uh, said he was worried about the ten and one Eagles. Uh, I remember (laughs) when Seth Joyner just got on the program and wanted them to be ten percent better. And Dan Cilio said that uh, they're not going to pay Jalen Hurts and that they're worrying about Jalen Hurts and that Chris Sims said uh, he would take Daniel Jones over Jalen Hurts right now and the team would still be the same. I remember all of it. I remember absolutely everything, and, and and you know what? The funny thing is, you talked to me last last uh, last year after that Tampa Bay Buccaneers game. I went down there to Raymond James Stadium. I saw it with my own two eyes. I was out on Jalen Hurts, but you know what? I came back. I came back, and I and I still think people. It took a little bit for them to come back and stuff, but I think around. I think that Vikings game. I think that Vikings game when I finally was like, all right, Jalen Jalen Hurts is the truth. Once he uh, once he once he took that uh, design read. And uh, just pummeled over like three Vikings. I was like, you know what, this guy's pretty good. I think we can. I think we can get there on this guy's back. Hey, um, think about. It. Let me just let me just <clears throat> pause for a second here. Yeah. All of the criticism that the well, I mean, for the first sixty six percent of the season, the first two thirds of the season, it was like Gannon criticism, and then the Steichen criticism came in a little bit at the end. Um, it wasn't like uh, for for. The criticism itself wasn't over, but let's draw a distinction between the criticism itself. The criticism itself was not overboard. It just looked a little odd because they were still eight and one, nine and one, but they're still a great team, right? If, if you put that type of criticism in a vacuum, they're not aggressive enough or, you know, they need to do this and they, they need to do that. It's not so bad, but when you frame it in the context of like, they're still the best team in the NFL, that's what made it look silly. We had all these complaints all year long about Jonathan Gannon's defense not being aggressive enough. They don't blitz enough. Too much four-man rush and drop seven in the zone. Kyle Pagan. Jonathan Gannon's soft-ass defense knocked not one quarterback out of the game in the NFC Championship game, but knocked two quarterbacks out of the game. Let me just repeat that for emphasis here. Jonathan Gannon's defense knocked two quarterbacks out of the game in the NFC championship. Just, just think if they were 10% better, they would have probably, what, knocked out uh, an offensive lineman, maybe Christopher Caffrey as the emergency backup. How Now that we know, know what we know, and I think a lot of us, I know I know you, myself, well, I don't think you, you don't really jump in the chat during uh, during Eagles games. But no, I, I, stay myself, away. I, I stay away yeah. on purpose. Yeah. I know a lot of guys in the slack were like, Brock Purdy's a goddamn pussy. Like, if you're standing on the sideline and you got your helmet on and you want to put your hands in your hand warmers, yeah. Get uh, the fuck back in the game. It's the NFC Championship. You know, uh, we, we need it. Yeah. Now we know that. Uh, <laughs> we didn't know he had a torn UCL. At the time. <laughs> UCL. Yeah. Uh, he's going to be out for the next six months. Yeah. I would. Uh, you know what? I would hate to be a 49ers fan today. 
uh, yesterday because, like, what do you do? Do you go back to Trey Lance? Do you go back to Jimmy G, who actually, like, you know, righted the ship? Or do you go back to Brock Purdy? It's basically Carson Wentz versus Nick Foles on steroids for the next six months there. In the- <laughs> it was such a weird game, too. I mean, I don't know. I guess, were you and Craig watching it at a bar before you went filming? First half at my place, second half at Bonner. Shout out to Bonner's 23rd and Chestnut. Just a, a great, a great bar. No frills, Irish bar. Walked down about seven minutes to go in the fourth quarter. So I missed like the whole Trent Williams, Kenny, Kenny Gainwell dust up. That's basically the what I missed. Yeah, and Kayvon Wallace throwing the Kayvon retaliatory Wallace, sorry, not Kayvon Kayvon punch. Yeah. Um, but I, I was just watching that first quarter. And so they go down and they score. And then, uh, you know, the injury happens. And I'm like, oh, man, this is, they knocked him out of the game, man. Josh, I didn't even know who the fuck their backup quarterback was going yeah. into this game. I'm like, who's coming in? Oh, Josh Johnson's coming in. And, uh, you know, you felt pretty good about it at that point. But then the, the Eagles the offense couldn't do anything for a couple of drives. And then they, and then Christian McCaffrey trucked like three dudes on the way into the end zone. I was like, this is 77. What the hell is going on here? Did you get vibes? Did you get Joe Webb vibes? I think everybody did, man. I mean, I was reading that. I try not to tweet too much during the games because it's kind of the same thing. It's like being in Slack. It's just distracting. You know, I'm writing the takeaways story mm-hmm. as we're doing the, the game, right? So I basically just focus on that. I do a lot of like pausing and rewinding and, and looking at plays again or whatever. But I was like, surely there's no way. I think that like that little thing of doubt like crept into everybody's oh, mind. Yeah. We're like, surely this is not going to happen. Because you've seen it before. But then it turned into like, Okay, they got the um, they had that long drive, you know, with a bunch of penalties, and they scored, and then the turnover, and they scored. Like, okay, this is over. And then for the second half, it was just like, I just didn't feel like I, I don't know the, the juice, the vibe, like the game was so strange, man. It, it just it played out nothing like anybody thought it would. And I'm of course I'm happy. Well, with them. you know, they're going to the Super Bowl, and holy shit, they knocked two quarterbacks out of it. But like, part of me, man, I can't lie, was was like really, really wanted to see. Like if Brock Party could do, could do it or not, and we were kind of, uh, I don't know. I think there's part of me that's always like, I would love to beat a full strength, like healthy team. You know, I'm not I'm not going to complain about that, but like we, I think we were kind of robbed. Here's a comparison. I'll give you a comparison. I couldn't wait for Conor McGregor versus Jose Aldo, right? I couldn't wait for Ben Askren versus Jorge Masvidal. Those fights were over in 20 seconds. Yeah. And so we never really, we never really got to see what what those fights were going to be you know so in a weird way i was like i would have liked to see a full strength party i would have liked to see the eagles beat a healthy party instead of just i mean look they knocked two i mean those are stories of like ledge like knocking two quarterbacks out of a championship game of course i'm never going to complain about that but like the 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 unbiased like sports person in me would would have loved to see like a like a classic you know that's just the football lover in you and i can always appreciate that me on the other hand i wanted the easiest game in the world that's why i predicted 30 to 10 on uh, on last <laughs> thursday and i look I, I i came out smelling like roses and san francisco where's he at he can't even show his face on this program right yeah, now. where's anthony san francisco right now? but see i'm going to give him a pass man i'm gonna, I'm gonna give him a pass no we, no because we don't because we didn't we didn't get to see that i know you know we, we didn't get to see it play and we never are gonna see so think about how what? many stories we were how many stories did i do on the site last week about can brock purdy play in this environment you know is a third string quarterback gonna come in here and but there's whole road games, games in the big 12 <laughs> yeah I mean, we, but we're not gonna like we're never that question will remain unanswered forever like we're never we're never gonna uh, you know and so be it but i mean it's, it's just funny how you know all that stuff it's like when you like it's like when you do like hours of research and you think you've had like the perfect bet right Mm -hmm. and then like some dipshit gets like a red card like two minutes into the game you're like what the what the fuck you know because you know because you ever you know this preparation this expectation it plays out nothing like you think it's going to play out and played out in the eagles favor but i mean you know and holy shit what are they doing what are they doing trying to block hassan reddick with tight ends so that that's my counterpoint to being like every everybody outside of philadelphia seems like they want to just be like oh they only played the giants and they only played uh, the four string quarterback, but it's like, like you said, they knocked out the quarterback injuries in football happen. Injuries are a part of everything. Do you not remember 2018 when the Eagles won with a backup quarterback? I didn't hear any excuses then. Yeah. You know, all I heard was the Eagles were done for Philly fan makes a great point right here. 2017 Patriots. They played Mariota and, and Blake Bortles to get to yeah. the, uh, I, guess to get to and Blake the Bortles, NFL. Yeah. I mean, shit happens. Like it's, it, you got to play the schedule. Phil, yeah. Football is a violent fucking game. But how are you not going to give credit? How are you not going to give credit to like there's these doofuses that are coming out afterwards? But well, they you know the 49ers didn't have any healthy quarterbacks because the Eagles knocked them out of the game. 
What was up with Jimmy G? Jimmy G couldn't dress. I thought there was like these rumors that he was coming back for the uh, for he'd be ready for the playoffs. I thought he dressed, honestly. Oh, yeah. I mean, I guess I thought that was um, I think those reports were a couple weeks ago where initially they may have thought he, he they thought he may have been ready for for this. But obviously he wasn't. But I mean, you, you, I, don't, I don't I don't know what you want the Eagles to do or say, I mean, they're going to play Mahomes in the Super Bowl, right? So they're going to finally be able to answer that question, which by the way, it was a valid complaint throughout the year. When I did that whole big, like 2000 word story on Jonathan Gannon, which not enough people read to be quite honest. Um, that was a really good story and it didn't get as much readership, but maybe because people didn't want to read 2000 words on Gannon, but and, um, <laughs> the main complaint, the main complaint was like, they didn't, they didn't, you know, it's like they haven't beaten anybody. They beat like Carson Wentz and they beat, you know, Matt Ryan. They're like, okay, I get it. They didn't play Allen. They, uh, Josh Allen. They didn't play Mahomes. They didn't play Burrow and, and whatever. But the reason that they got the path of Daniel Jones and Brock Purdy and Josh Johnson, and then an injured Brock Purdy was b- because they were the best team in the regular season and they earned their way to the number one seed and only had to play two games. And that's just how the, the cards were, 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 and ended up being dealt, you know, against them. So I, I can't, you can, you can point that out that the Eagles had an easy path, but you have to give them credit for creating that path them, themselves. You know I mean? They were, they were responsible for that. And here's the, here's the thing. The, the, the moment this game, like you can all, you can talk about, you know, the injury, the Brock Purdy injury and whatever. But to me, outside of that, the the two key moments in this game had nothing to do with anything on the field. It was the people in the booth. It was the Devontae Smith catch, hmm. quotes, because it was not a catch that San Francisco didn't review. And then not just the injury to Brock Purdy on the Reddick uh, strip sack, but the wherewithal for the video people on the Eagles side to say, yo, this is a fumble, man, because that ball was out before he came. He, he pushed it with his forearm. Yeah. I brought a prop with me. That was good. Um, that was good. And, you, you know, if they didn't, you know, it, what, what happens if they don't review that? I mean, then they don't get the, they might not get the ball back. Right. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, those were, those were like huge key things to me. And then for Kyle Shanahan to come out afterwards and say like, you know, when we have play action, you know, it's on the tight ends to to block the, you know, the the defensive end. And like so on the one they had Tyler Croft, who's a backup, it wasn't even George Kittle. They had Tyler Croft try to one on one with Hassan Reddick and he just killed him. And then on the second one, they had um Juwan, what's his face, the receiver come over and try to chip him before yeah, Kittle was supposed to come over on a wham block from the other side of the formation. And he didn't get it. Neither one of those guys got a hand on him. And I'm not convinced, Pagan, that Reddick didn't have that ball coming out of the sack on Josh Johnson. You know, they talked about his his butt being on the ground and maybe the whistle could have been blown dead there, but he came away with that ball. So, I mean, that was the, those were the things for me. Of course, the injury, right? But the two, what one one challenge that was not made and a challenge that was made, um, and then the the tactical thing for Shanahan to set up his blocking schemes like that or or the offensive line coach to set it up like that. To me, that was where the, those were the, the two or three main things where the game was won and lost. Yeah, what is it? What's the proper uh, Andy Reid discourse coming up, coming up for the next two weeks? I haven't listened to anything really. I haven't. I've kind of been buried in in, in different stuff and and everything. So I haven't seen if there's been a lot of uh, Andy Reid talk for the first two first forty eight hours uh, after the Super Bowl. What's the proper way to kind of elaborate on it? Is it uh, a revenge game or is it more just hey, you know, Andy, thanks for setting the foundation we've obviously been benefiting on for the last ten plus years. I mean, I think it's a nothing burger. You know, that's why I wrote the story. Like, like this is what I like to do on the site on the first day um, of like a week leading up to a game. You know, when we had the Giants uh, for the divisional round, the column that I wrote was credit to New York, but we're not talking ourselves into the Giants winning this game, right? So I like to do a macro level. Of st- I'm going to use the word macro for EJ if he's listening. Do a macro level, like stage. Take center. a try. This one was, you know, you're going to get two weeks of like bullshit Andy Reid talk. But there's no juice for that, Kyle, because the Eagles got their ring in 2017. Andy Reid got his ring a couple years later. And so what is the, what is there to, 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 to fight for here? Yeah, we, we, want, you know, we want to beat the shit out of Andy and get a second Super Bowl trophy. But there's no like, – he got his ring. We got our ring. Like Theoretically, everybody was supposed to die happy, right? You know, So it worked out for, for everyone. I don't hold any – like residual grudge against Andy Reid. I mean, he was responsible for some of the, for one of the best eras of, of Eagles football ever, you know? And, and yeah, he didn't get over the the hump and they couldn't get it done at the end. But what am I like, 
what am I supposed to be mad about that in 2023? <laughs> like, I, you know, of, you know, the NFC championship game didn't turn out the way. Well, I don't I, like, what is the, what would be the point of me like holding on to that bitterness now? I mean, would, that was 15 years ago. Would you rather be the early 2000s Eagles who made the four NFC championships in a Super Bowl? Or would you rather be the early 2000s Detroit Lions who couldn't, you know, get off the turf, you know, out of, or even out of the <laughs> NFC North? Like, I, I just I don't know what people would want if they, if you hate, if you have yeah. all this hate in your heart for Andy, it doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, obviously, I was born in 93, so I, all I know is Andy. Um, but like, he literally set up the, the greatest, not even just, uh, error for me in Eagles history, but error in terms of the four major sports, the the Flyers, the Sixers, you could argue the Phillies with 2008 to 2011. But I would also say, you know, obviously because they got over the hump, but I would also say that, you know, Andy made it in 2008. We're always in it. Um, yeah, I just, you know, I, 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 and he's just a big, fat, lovable guy. He's Andy fucking Reed. He looks like a walrus. He orders three steaks at Barclay prime when he, when he was on yeah. his uh, coaching interview with, uh, with uh with uh Jeffrey Lurie and stuff. Like he's just a he's a fun guy who wears Bahama or Tommy Bahama. Like, how can you not like the guy? He's I don't know. Cool big man. Yeah, I don't know. Some people uh, some people pitch this thing where it's like uh, he was short with the fans and media and he was smug and he never gave anybody anything. Angelo is still bitches to this day about like, well, he never said anything. Well, we he's hated Nick Sirianni for giving us analogies about flowers last year. Yeah, so we I can't be yeah. I, I don't know. But even if you had a complaint about any of that, oh, you didn't like that he gave the media nothing or he said times yours or whatever, you know, people, people love Chip Kelly for being smug. They love Chip Kelly until he went seven and nine. Actually, yeah. I mean, so I don't know. But I, but again, I don't think any of that, any like annoyances that you had with Andy Reid 15 years ago. I mean, is any of that wor worth being upset about in 2023? Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. I, that's why I that's why I think I wrote that story like. <clears throat> I feel like I write a stupid Andy Reid thing like every January because the Chiefs are like in or, in or around the Super Bowl, you know. And I think the one analogy that I made was like he Andy Reid's kind of like an ex girlfriend, right? Where it's like you, you don't okay, it didn't work out, but you don't like really have a grudge. There's no hard. Well, I don't want to see her succeed. No, I mean you don't. You don't want to see like you're not like cheering for her to go on and and date like I don't know. Sean. <laughs> Shams, <laughs> you pick Shams out of everybody you could have picked. You pick Shams. No, 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 because you were talking about him with the K, uh, K Adam shit, right? So, you know, he's Shams a, is a wild pick. There's yeah. like a, a thousand A listers. Let's do Leo, Leo DiCaprio. Okay, you, you're not necessarily like outright pulling for her to like date Leonardo DiCaprio, but like you don't really, get, you don't but, hold some like lingering like animosity. Like, good for her, good for her, you know. I mean, if and if you, if you go up against Andy Reid. Of course you want to be there. The only Andy Reid take for me this week is we should, hey, thanks for all those years. They were fun. Now we want to beat the shit out of you on, mm -hmm. on Sunday, two Sundays from now, because you're standing between us and a, and a Lombardi trophy. Exactly. I think it's like you don't want your girlfriend, to, you don't want your girlfriend to go out and date Leonardo DiCaprio, but if she does and I start dating Margot Robbie, they cut, they, and we both won Super Bowls, they kind of just delete each other. They X each other out, yeah. in my opinion. Margot Robbie, man. Holy shit. Holy shit. I watched Wolf of Wall Street the other day. Yeah, holy. We shit. don't do a lot of like you know what do they what do they say on the radio guy talk or whatever. Yeah, but man. yeah. locker room talk. You want to do some locker room talk? What do you want to talk good, about? You want to talk about? Uh... <laughs> it's a good looking woman. I'll say that much. Yeah. I don't think that's wrong. Is that like patronizing of me to, to say? I don't that? know. I put chasing skirt in a in a blog yesterday. I don't know if that's that's still allowed or not. You're a chasing skirt in a story? yeah. No, we right. still say that chasing tail. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, JR has got a question here. Uh, sorry, I keep asking, but curious your thoughts on what the overwhelming majority of national clowns will say well, about what about Andy or about the game? Right? I think he means about he 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 wrote it a couple of times. He said, uh, "Who do you think more national pundits will will pick uh, the Chiefs or the Eagles?" You think leading up to the Super Bowl? Um, I don't know, man. I mean, I you know. But kind of, I, we're going to have two weeks to talk about Mahomes ankle too, or whatever. Right. And their receivers are kind of banged up, but, uh, does Mahomes ankle feel like Brady's finger? I, I guess. Yeah. Remember, I he guess. Wore the, remember he wore the, uh, yeah. the, the, the wide receiver gloves to the press conference. Glove. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. I think it's too early to, to tell, but I think that like the Eagles are, are going into this with like a lot more momentum than the, the Chiefs, I mean, Landon Dickerson's injury is not bad. Lane Johnson held up perfectly fine against Nick Bosa. Um, 
Joey Bosa was rattled before the game. He was like oh. yell, yelling about butt buddies and all kinds of stuff. He was just totally not ready for the. Uh, <laughs> Did you see him inside the game too? <laughs> yeah, they were getting him shit. They in got him inside the game. Like, yeah. he, here's the thing. It, and I, I'm glad you brought this up because I did want to talk about it. Like, dude, he's a mental midget. Like, if I had $135 million, first of all, I don't know, Craig, if you can bring up the one where he's outside. Um, if I had $135 million, first I'd buy my my girlfriend way better 49ers clothes. I don't know if you saw what she was wearing, but that was just, it was like red knee-high boots and like a 49ers like smock. <laughs> like, like, look at this woman in the back. Yeah, like, come on, get get your shit together. If it's your sister, yeah. if it's your girlfriend, I don't care. You have $135 million. You know what's Second, a weak, very weak move is when you sit, walk towards somebody and say something, then you immediately turn around and start walking. <laughs> and, then, and then he asked him, how is his fines? And he says, they're fine because I'm rich, bitch. And it's like, you know you've lost the fight. Every time you have to bring up your net worth or your bank account, you know, you are just so put in a hole. Yeah. And then Craig, can you pull up the one where he's inside? But see, um, look at how, look at how, like, yeah. And his, and his w wife or girlfriend, or she's got a full like 49ers, like a uh, poncho. Uh, what do they call those? Like fucking Picasso, ready to go like paint something. Like she, yeah, she looks like on. she's an extra in like red dead redemption three or something. You yeah. know? Um, she I mean, $135 you know, million dollars and you still can't talk shit. Yeah, it's like was nothing he said. Like he's just like that was like grade school lunch buddy table. Like, oh, what are you doing? Snapchat and your butt buddies. Like, I haven't heard <laughs> butt buddies since I was in like seventh grade. They're not very smart. I don't think either Bosa, um, you know, guy is is very smart at all. Nah. But I mean, yeah, when you when you let the fans get to you outside the the thing, you know. It, but look at that, and then compare that to how. Um, uh, Justin Verlander and Kate Upton were mm -hmm. with the Phillies fans, so like that, you know, laughing it off and t taking. But that's all you have to them. do. All yeah. you have to do is just laugh it off, and everyone's like, "Oh, you know, Joey Bosa kind of handled that pretty well." But then everybody's just like, after he like goes after the refs after the uh, Jaguars Chargers game, yeah. and then he does this, people are like, "Yeah, I think he's got a couple screws loose." I, I, I but I wouldn't mess with Joey Bosa, not just no. because he's a six foot five, two hundred plus pound behemoth just yeah. because i think he's got a couple screws loose and i don't think he cares about throwing a throwing a punch I really no no it. he's a bona fide idiot you know so i mean yeah i don't think he went to any classes at ohio state but i just think it's uh yeah so here's here's him inside the stadium so the eagles fans in section 114 last night who were trolling joey bose with photos of trevor lawrence on their phones look at this guy behind joey at one point he like he like gets his he gets his shoulders and like pulls them back because he's probably like Dude, what are you doing? Like, why are you giving in to these guys? You're yeah. like, I don't know if anyone's ever sat behind there, but those those suites are like high up. Nobody can get to you. All you gotta do is just sit back. All you gotta do is go two rows and just and you can just watch the game from there. Like I, I just He's like the prototypical like meathead from yeah. the from football movie from like varsity blues. He's probably like sitting there like smashing his head with his helmet before the uh in the in the locker room before the game starts. But you know, it's funny because the voice I we didn't we didn't have audio of that, but in the when the fan is heckling him, the fan sounds like the guy who was talking massive amounts of shit to the Astros bullpen when he was like, Valdez, what's on your glove? What's on your okay, glove? Don't yeah, even get me started on you. <laughs> it sound, sounded like the same guy. I think everybody in Philadelphia just sounded the guy. I mean, you, you've heard probably. people from the Northeast, you've heard people from Delco. They could be, they could be, <laughs> they're basically cousins. Um, it was good trolling, though. Yeah. I mean, when you, when you, you knew it was over before, uh, before the game even started. Okay. And then Bosa, the other Bosa got pancaked by Jordan Maialata. So, you know, yeah. it was like, uh, you know, by the way, you know how good of a mood I am. And I also, because I lost the bet, but look at my shirt. Look what I'm wearing. <laughs> I'm yeah, so true. ill, Philly, whatever it is. I don't know what it is, but anyone that was following, I lost a bet to Art History yeah. because Nick yeah. Sirianni wore this gross shirt. The guy from Art History said if uh, it was the worst bet in the in the history of sports or yeah. betting, uh, it's worse than your your buddy who does ten team parlays and wins nine out of ten. Um, but it was by the way, people got to show. Here's the new rule going forward: you got to show every single bet you lose too on Twitter. <laughs> You know, because I see these guys who are like, look, I hit my 15 leg parlay. Yeah, but you lost the 14 of them before that, you know, so it's like, I, you know. <laughs> so basically I had to wear, I have to wear this shirt. I'll yeah. let the guys know. I've had, I've had people in my mentions. I've had people in my DMs just be yeah. like, when you wearing the shirt, when you wearing the shirt. So I'm wearing the shirt on Crossing Broadcast because I love small business, bought it myself. They wanted to give me a free one. <laughs> I told them, hell no, I'll do this myself. 
And uh, so here we go. I'm paying up the bet because the Eagles beat the Giants on the money line and they were 12 and a half point favorites. So Yeah, there wasn't really much of an outcome for you. What was, what was the other half? It was, of the the outcome was uh, I don't have to wear the shirt if the Eagles lose. So basically crossing broad myself, everybody loses money and the Eagles season's over or uh, the the Eagles beat the Giants who were they were 12 and a half point favorites and I have to wear a shirt. Hmm. What a bet. Well, you're a good you're a good man, Peg, and I don't know if I would have taken that bet. But win just, win, everybody, baby. Everybody knows we're all about small business here. Win win. All right. I got one more before we bring uh Breland on. Uh Craig, can you pull up the uh the TikTok from this was the Chiefs game of last year, 16 months ago, October 3rd, 2021. They lost 42 to 30. This it, a lot can change in 16 months, Kev. Mm. A lot can change. Yeah. Craig looks confused. He doesn't know what you're asking for. I got it, Craig. I'll put it in the. Uh, I'll put it in the chat. Hold on a sec, buddy. <laughs> this is good. If this was on the radio right now, the program director would be smashing the button like yeah. dead air, dead the air, dead air. Yeah. Dead um, air. You mean a vamp? No, here it is. Okay. Um, so 16 months ago, we played the Kansas City Chiefs. If everyone remembers, 21 points called back in the red zone. That was when like we couldn't figure out pick plays and stuff. Remember that whole uh, error of Nick Sirianni? For, like the RPO stuff. Yeah. For, yeah, yeah. So I obviously was outside after the game. This is before I was even with Crossing Broad. If we can get some uh, full yeah. screen there, Craig. But yeah. this is after the game, uh, the Chiefs game. And just, I mean, it's kind of good to look back on what can happen in 16 months. Yeah. Anyone want to talk birds? Lick a penis. Run the ball. Run the, run the ball. ball. Run, run the ball. ball. Just run the ball. Run the ball. Run the ball. Sirianni needs to run the ball. I need to get a ball to Miles Sanders. Let me guess. Nick Sirianni's got to run the ball more. Uh, yeah, and quit. Worst coach we have is Richie Kota. What do you think of the game? <laughs> Man, fuck the Eagles. What do you think, Cunningham? I think this is 10 pounds of crap in a five-pound bag. Flex for Cox was not in on that fourth and what, three? Yeah. Why? Makes $100 million. Is it more of a Fletcher Cox problem or more of a Jonathan Gannon problem? Sirianni problem. Oh. What's up, 6'9? What do you think? Terrible, man. Yeah. Sirianni is a little in over his head. The red zone offense, I mean, it's despicable. We can't put the ball in the end zone. At least you got an Arnold Palmer spiked out of it. Yeah, at least. It's, all, it's about all I got today. Go, Birds. Go, Birds. We suck. Uh, any positives? No. All right. Anyone want to talk birds? Lick a penis. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. So that's what it was 16 months ago. Yeah. Isn't it? It's great. I mean, care, comparing Nick Sirianni to Richie Kotite after four games, that's just that's just the the ultimate yeah. evil. Uh, I like how even game. in disappointment, though, like you get a go birds uh, from the guy. Yeah, yeah they it's suck. Like a high go birds, go birds. Like aloha. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is like aloha it could mean hello or goodbye yeah, yeah. it could mean go fuck yourself it could mean hey how you doing great shirt yeah. all right let's bring on breland moore fox 29 sports anchor how are you today good how are you good Thanks good on. this is gonna be fun good fresh off of going viral with your picture of joel and b and standing next to kevin hart have your twitter mentions recovered yet um, no, no, they're still very much going because now it's also on um, foreign language Twitter <laughs> as well. So now I'm getting all these responses in languages that I don't actually know. There it is. That's mine. Um, that's mine. Yeah. And Kevin Hart post, posted it on Instagram without crediting me, but that's okay. You know what? That's okay. Um, but yeah, so it's still, it's still very much going. I might have to turn my mentions off. That's okay. It was, it was worth it. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's it's nuts when you go viral. Me and Kev have both been through it. Oh my god! Like you're just mentions. Yeah. Pe then people oh, it's have the fights. People have fights in the comments that have nothing to do with the picture. <laughs> they're yelling at me, and they're like, "I want to know how how tall the poster is in this. Like, why is she slandering short people?" And I'm like, "Well, first of all, I'm six feet tall, so jokes on you." Um, second, it's also yeah. like, why why are we doing this? Like. what? You wouldn't say this if it was about like a woman's weight or something. Why are we picking on Kevin for his height? I'm like, come yeah. on. What about is the man a problem on Twitter? You know, it's, yeah, it's a big it's, problem. I should just mute them, but I do like to see it just because it is. It has been entertaining the past couple of days. I did not. I truly did not expect it to go 
that viral. I mm-hmm. just kind of snapped it because I thought it was hilarious standing next to the two of them. And I'm like, oh, this would be funny. Like, I wonder if other people want to see this. Didn't expect the whole world to want to see it, but <laughs> yeah, it was uh, it was great meme potential. Yeah, it was great. Um, Wait, hang on. So before we get started, you okay. both went to Temple, right? Yes. Um, did you guys get the email about the 30 under 30 or, or whatever? Okay. I didn't. I did. And I had already been working with them. So I actually was a 30 under 30 last year. <laughs> I had I had been working with them to see if I could possibly MC this year's 30 under 30. So I didn't think anything of it. I was like, oh, they accidentally sent me this when they I'm not MCing the thing, the way the way that it was set up. Um, I have too much going on and I will not be yeah. here. Um, I'm on vacation. But I was actively working with them. So I didn't really think anything of it. Then all of a sudden people are like, this is a whole, this is a thing. Um, Everybody's getting a 30 under 30 notification and they definitely are not 30 under 30. So (laughs) I guess they made up for it by giving us all a happy hour or something like that. It's like everybody can get in um, without paying the fee. So. Well, I'm not, I mean, I didn't even get a fake one. I would have at least loved the fake one. And I'm 29. I yeah. turned I turned uh, 30 on uh, on Thursday. So Come you on. know what? For, is there a 40 you. under 40? Is there a 40 under 40? 50 under 50? There yeah. should be. But I think you can still. I think you still have one more year. Somebody. Needs oh, because I'm technically gonna be 30. Let's start a campaign. Yeah. Nominate Kyle for 30 under 30. No, yeah. the inquire the inquirer super fan was enough. The inquirer <laughs> super fan. Okay. okay. I think don't be, <laughs> And I beat three septuagenarians. So you know what? That's that's enough for me. There you go. Victory. Yeah. Um, so, Brendan, we wanted to have you on because, I mean, you understand what Super Bowls are, covering them and everything. You covered one in Kansas City. Uh, two in there. Oh, yeah, yeah. because, yeah, one, one yeah, and one. The second one was weird. We didn't actually get a chance to be on site because of the yeah. So, but I was at I was at 54 for sure. So 54, that was the one they won, right? The one they lost was during the COVID year in Tampa Bay. Yeah, okay. Um, I do have to ask. I mean, you saw now you've been a part of uh, two NFC championships. No, two championship, conference championship wins. Well, three, technically. Who parties more, Kansas City or Philadelphia? And don't be biased, please. Come on. You already know the answer to this, Philly. I don't remember seeing anyone, and they could have been in the streets, um, but I, I did not see any of that going on in Kansas City for the AFC championships. But here, I mean, and I didn't know how it was going to be because of the recency factor. I understood, mm-hmm. obviously, in 2017, going out in the streets and partying and whatnot because – that was a that was a relatively rare occurrence, but here I, I wasn't sure if Philly was going to show up the same way again, um, especially after the World Series. I didn't know if everyone was going to be exhausted or not, but no, y'all did not disappoint. Y'all provided exactly what we were expecting. Um, so yeah, it has it has to be Philly, hands down. Yeah, do they have a Broad Street in Kansas City? No, they have a they have a place called the Plaza, which would probably be the most logical meeting point for everybody. Country Club Plaza. Um, and that was not, that was not it. What's it comparable to in the city? Do you know, like, like, uh, Rittenhouse square or like, I, know, yeah. I would, yes, I would compare it to Rittenhouse. Yes. Do you imagine uh, Kev, if every time we won like the world series or we went on like the conference championship, the <laughs> NFC championship, we just rush Rittenhouse square. Yeah. We're going to Rittenhouse. Yeah, we're going to Rittenhouse. <laughs> get in the trees. Everybody get in the trees, we're greasing yeah. the trees up and stuff. Yeah. Oh. Instead of, uh, <clears throat> instead of pole climbers, they'll be climbing the, climbing the trees down at Rittenhouse square or something, you know, but, but look, but Breland, they, they I mean, the Kansas city fans are pretty, Pretty oh, good, God. right? I mean, they seem pretty hardcore, yeah. They oh, rob yeah. banks to get to the games. Yeah, they oh, they absolutely are. It's just a it's a different level and a different dynamic and a different culture. Mm. Does, if that makes sense, they are very much out there. Um, the tailgating culture is huge. I mean, not mm. that it's not here. Obviously, we have great tailgates, but it's different. Um, you get those big smokers coming into Arrowhead Stadium and people are just barbecuing all day long. Are They're there in the parking lots at 8 a.m. again, but they're slow roasting brisket and having a good time. And they definitely drink and get after it. Um, and it's rowdy, but it's just a different, it's a different type of rowdy and a different type of dynamic. Um, but they're definitely still passionate. And I think this is going to be a really good matchup. So I, I, one of my favorite ones is to watch is Fox 29, watch Bob Kelly go down there and stuff and talk to the fans and everything. Would they do that when you were in Kansas City? Would they send people down there on site and stuff? 
Oh yeah. Um, and people would show up same thing as, you know, Lincoln financial field, the buses would be out there, the decorated, you know, chief's bus and stuff. I, I didn't go, I was doing the same thing I do here. And that's in studio with, um, an you're animal. Safe. You, you're, you're safe. Yeah, you're safe. I'm safe, but yeah, they would, it would get a little rowdy down there for sure. Um, just a, like I said, just a different type. It's hard to describe. We'll see it obviously in Arizona. It's just a different type of rowdy and a different type of mentality. It's that Midwest mentality. Yeah. So, you, so your your producer, your director didn't have to have their finger above the sensor button as much in Kansas City as they probably do here. No, that's <laughs> no. It was. T- I'm telling you, Peg. I'm like, oh my god, I because I used to work every weekend at um at Channel Three, mm-hmm. right? And and we would always, you know, be an Eagles game, and we'd have our cookie cutter stuff. And be like, all right, you're going down to do Eagles post game you're going to go to chickies and pete's and hold a microphone we'll talk to fans and we could have just done a template for every sunday show that we did during eagle season but yeah i mean they had conversations like with the news director and the executive producer and stuff it's like okay let's make sure we stand like here and let's not let this get because like the 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 thing that i think people don't really realize is like the fcc doesn't really care what you have to say necessarily like if somebody jumps in and they go like, yeah, F, yeah, you know what I mean? It's like, you can't just say, well, we didn't know. It's because they'll, they'll be like, okay, well, maybe you don't set up there the next time or something. But it's like it's like unforgiving, isn't it? Yeah, they don't care. Um, the only problem that we had, I'm not going to lie, the only problem I remember us having was actually at the parade, and it was Travis Kelsey was no. the new of all. <laughs> no, yeah. no, fans. no fans. Just- Travis Kelsey was the problem, dropping F-bombs on the uh, – on the podium but that you know what like that's to be expected right but there was not a need to have a permanently hovering finger over the mute button um as much as it is here but yeah that's that's a real thing guys we get fined every single time yeah yell could you imagine kev if crossing broad got fined every time someone cursed into my microphone <laughs> but it just <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy though because they don't i mean you should have seen it when we we you know because we we like the the um the networks would rotate who has the super bowl right so we go to like fox and then we go to like nbc and then we go to us and then we go to fox or you know and like you should see the fcc complaints that would come in i mean we just read through all of them in the newsroom like before the show and be like oh my god like people are like killing <laughs> killing like you know, with these with these complaints or whatever but it's not you know uh, you would you would think that it's like they would throw you a bone or give you some leniency because I can't control if the guy jumps in behind me and like does the gives you a middle finger or something. But they, and essentially they like say we don't we don't care like you got to figure it out you know. Are yeah. you um it's are you on. heading out to Arizona? What's up? Are you heading out to Arizona? Yes. Um. So I leave the fifth and I come back the thirteenth. So, wow. Yeah. It's a long mm-hmm. haul. I'm excited though. It'll be fun. Oh hell yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've been out to I've been out to Glendale before. It's beautiful. They do it really well around there. They have so many restaurants and stuff. The Coyote Stadium used to be there. I don't know what's there anymore now because the Coyotes are playing on like Arizona State or something like that. I'm weird. Yeah, um, I've never been to Arizona, so this Ooh. is a new experience for me. Um, and which is surprising because I've been a lot of places between Temple and just doing this job, mm-hmm. but Arizona is going to be a new one. So I'm looking forward to it. I hope it's as fun as Miami because Miami was fun. Oh, I... it was great. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like Miami is a different beast. Miami would be, I mean, it's got to be better than Tampa Bay. I know you didn't go out there. And then where was, where was 54? Do you remember? 54 was Miami. Oh, that was Miami. Okay, that was, was Miami. Miami. Okay. Yeah. That had to be insane. That yeah. Breland, be. Breland got Miami and all the Eagles beats got to go to Minnesota in February. You know, so. <laughs> Every, you know covering a Super Bowl is a beast, right? But yeah. uh, everyone's like, at least you didn't, at least you didn't have to go to Minnesota. You know what? Yeah. I may have been completely stressed out and burnt out by the end of it from all the stuff I had to do, but I got to do it in nice weather. So True. I, I was really okay with, with my lot there. <laughs> have you, have you recovered from the Phillies world series? Cause you guys did a great job there, but you yes. guys were, um, um, it took a little bit. I'm not going to yeah. lie. But that's different because I, it's every single day, right? You're just, it's a continuous grind through all of the rounds until the very end. So it's late that's, too. That's a whole nother beast. And I also have never done that before because with like, the Royals were atrocious. So <laughs> yeah. we didn't we didn't get a chance to do that in Kansas City. But this is so much easier. I've been here before. I know the dynamic of it. Nice. So I'm just looking forward to having some fun and enjoying what apparently people are starting to call the Breland Bowl. 
So oh, yeah, yeah. The nice. if this was like soccer, it'd be like the the Breland Moore Derby or something. Yeah. Kansas, Kansas City versus uh, Kansas City versus Philadelphia. But I mean, I get you get a you, because of that, you have a unique perspective on it, you know. And I, I don't. We were talking earlier in the show about uh, like I I hate the whole Andy Reid angle because Andy hasn't been here in. 13 years or 10 years or whatever, you know, but, and he got his ring and the Eagles got their ring. So I don't, I don't know what there's to be, what there is to be upset about here, but what was the, what was the perspective on Andy out in, in Kansas city? I mean, how do the fans feel about him out there and what, what do they think about the job he he had done out there? Well, I, I mean, I think just look at the way that they ran that Super Bowl in Miami, right. Against the Niners, he was aggressive and um, the, clock management wasn't as much of an issue all the things that he's been criticized over and over for here in philadelphia were really not present in kansas city during that run Mm -hmm. and i don't really think people make much of it with the eagles i know he was asked about it because of course he's going to be asked about it this is the other team that's close to his heart and um you know i know that philadelphia is very very special to him and he has said that over and over again and so the first year i was there he actually did uh the my cause my cleats game and the charity was a domestic violence charity here in the greater philadelphia area so I, he definitely keeps close ties here in philly and it's very important to him but i i do think that you guys are right it's kind of too much time has passed he's over it yeah. he's kansas city he's a kansas city guy and he's theirs now um, and he was able to find the success with Patrick Mahomes and company that he did not have here. And I think he's uh, I, he's grown a lot as a coach in that time as well. So um, I, I don't really think it's as big of a deal for them. But I also know, you know, he's going to be asked about it over and over again. And oh, he's yeah. going to say very complimentary things to Philadelphia because it is he he does 100 percent still cherish this area and his time here for sure. Who who is more popular? You think with their with their fan base, Travis Kelsey with the Chiefs or Jason Kelsey with the Eagles? Oh, yeah, tough. I don't know. They are probably two of the most beloved figures in yeah. football. Period. Like right? Travis Kelsey goes toe to toe with Pat Mahomes in Kansas City. Yes. Wow. Absolutely. Um, and the, both of them, they're so similar. And I actually had a chance to meet Donna several times. Their mom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she is just incredible. But I told her, I was like, look, I just want to commend you because you have two of the most amazing sons. Not only are they phenomenal on the field, of course, because they're just both elite in their position, probably the best or one of the best in their positions in the National Football League, but also the work that they do in the community, both of them individually. Travis, obviously, uh, 87 and Running Foundation, he's really big um, doing a ton of different stuff in the community in Kansas city. We all know what Jason is doing day in and day out underdog apparel, every single thing. I mean, they're just, they're so great and they really have immersed themselves in their respective cultures that I feel like both of them can really go toe to toe. And now they have like a national following because of the podcast, they're just blowing up. But I think it, I think it might be a draw because as much as we love Jason here in Philly, the sentiment, the sentiment is the same in Kansas City about Travis. Yeah, that, that is crazy. I mean, national podcast, two Hall of Famers. One's got a number one Christmas album. <laughs> one of the best centers of all time. One of the best tight ends of all time. Yeah, I don't think any, like, you could make a case that, like, no, like, two athletes have been on a better run no. than them in, like, the last three to four years. I mean, like, this is like a, they were, like, really good beforehand. It's just like a. It's not really a hot take. It's like a meteoric rise for them. I mean, they're like they're super popular. But I don't yeah, know we, anybody who dis. But I don't. I don't. You go around and ask like I don't know. Pick a pick a team. Like do I, I've never heard anybody say a negative thing about either of those guys either. Not even like rival team. I mean like, do Giants fans hate Jason Kelsey? No, like, no. no. I, like, I mean, what, is, what is there to know? Well, right. Like it's not anything yeah. that he's actually done. It's just that they're jealous that he's not on their team. Like that's the only, that's the only critique that you can possibly have. There is this argument about with Jason or with Travis Kelsey, rather that, you know, who's better George Kittle or Mm -hmm. Travis, but that's really the only thing that I've ever even heard about Travis as well. They're just two stand up young men that I (laughs) 
you love. <laughs> yeah, so, and also the thing with Jason Kelsey is like, what are you going to debate? Uh, is Jason Kelsey better than Olin Krutz? Is right. Jason Kelsey like, better than Marquise Pouncey? Like, who's, yeah. who's crushing Frank right center? Yeah. <laughs> who's crushing center tape and being like, you know what? That Jason Kelsey, number one all time, baby. Exactly. I'll go to the grave. Uh, were you um? Were you on uh, Broad Street or did you have to? Uh, were you in the studio? I was actually so for portion of a portion of it. I was at the game, so I stayed okay. and did some locker room, stayed and did some on field work. And then I went back to the studio. So I missed it, but I saw a little bit of the hubbub outside of fourth and market. Um, nice. Was yeah, there a nice I, little, nice little uh, contingent down there? Yeah, but I wasn't allowed to be properly in these streets. Maybe I one. hear you. I hear, hey, you're a professional. <laughs> you're a professional. Um, yes, no, but we were, uh, I mean, I'm sure you've seen all the videos and everything. Oh, yeah. So we wanted to do, you know, kind of like a top five moments from, we'll call it Eagles post game. Cause I don't have all just broad street stuff. But okay. I do have some so, some post game too, um, Craig. If you can cue up the fans on the bus stop now, I think this was the viral video of viral video that has gone everywhere. It's got every conversation from Septa needs better infrastructure to <laughs> these Eagles fans are a bunch of drunks. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, so here it is. Now, Breland Moore. She just got out of Temple University. She's not working at Fox 29. This video never gets back to her at all. She never, <laughs> no job prospects are ever uh, going to say no because of this. Is Breland Moore getting up on a bus stop? Is she getting on the lottery, uh, the green lottery bins that uh, they sell a lot of magazines out of? Like, what, what are you doing in this situation? I'm going to be really honest. I have a really strong self-preservation factor. <laughs> I was not the kid climbing on stuff. Um, there was always, even as a, like a young child in kindergarten, I was, well, I might get hurt on this. Maybe I shouldn't do that. So that probably wouldn't be me, even if there were no repercussions and I could just go nuts. I, I would very much be cheering them on, but that's not. But you'd be on the ground. You'd be, you'd be on the ground safe. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't have enough moxie to do that, whatever you want to call that. Are you afraid of heights? Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Is that a tall person thing? That I, might be a tall person thing. I don't know. It's just a very weird thing. And so even some press boxes are really jarring because if you're looking straight down, the Arrowhead press box is a great example of that. Yeah. It's just straight down onto the field and it looks like you're like, I don't know. Oh. Weird vertigo. I don't like it. I like the Eagles press box. It's kind of like off to the side. You're kind of like, yeah. you, look, yeah. you feel like you're in the stands rather than just Looking well, and it's closed to its glass contained, so you can't. Yeah. So between that and and just you know not wanting to have a permanent injury, I <laughs> it's not for me. But yeah. I appreciate everybody who does their part to make Philadelphia Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah, the the best part about it is someone reported it to Septa Social, and they said I would like to report a shattered bus stop shelter. And Septa Social got back to us and said, "Hey, Dave, thank you for reaching out." Septa's not responsible for those bus shelters on the street there. So Septa's not fixing it. I don't know who fixed it, but you know someone Monday was trying to catch the bus down Broad Street and they were like, Why is this why is my bus shelter all uh yeah. all out of whack? I just love that that Septa's just like, that's not that's not on us, dog. I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. That's yeah. somebody else, not yeah. us. <laughs> take that up with uh take that up with the streets department. Um <laughs> the second one we got. Nick Sirianni's daughter at the press conference. And I know, I know Kev loved this one. He's got a couple of daughters of his own. So, um, but, but Nick Sirianni's uh, daughter at the press conference, her name's Taylor. She's hilarious. Um, can we play that sound on there, Craig? A little bit different, but it was great to set the tone there um, and get the lead, right? And get the lead and, and put them behind. Taylor, stop it. <laughs> um, you know, each game's a little I mean, bit different, but it was great. To if you've ever been sitting in the car or like after like a t-ball game or like a baseball game and your parents just like start talking to their friends and stuff and all you want to do is just like get home and everything like this is what it feels like it feels like this is what it would be for kids absolutely she's so over it and you know what i absolutely i love when nick brings his kids up he usually brings miles um that's the older boy who's on the side there but um yes that's him um they are just so funny and half the time, I'm going to be really honest when I'm in the press room and those kids are up there, I'm half listening to Nick, half watching what they do because they're so entertaining 
and I love them. They crack me up, but she just, what a moment for her. <laughs> I, I think, I, Kev, I think he said at the end, he's like, I'm not bringing you guys anymore. <laughs> oh, did he say that really? Yeah. Yeah. Get the Super Bowl. Johnny Kid Band. Yeah. yeah. I can relate though, because I think I say to my three year old, I think I say, "Can you please stop that?" I, I think we say that at least a hundred times a day. So I, I, I can uh, I show solidarity with Nick on that one. Um, no, I, we have to have a conversation um, because Kiriani kids need to be front and center all the time. But it's true. It's one hundred percent. Who doesn't love? Who doesn't love? You know, kids at the press conference. Chris Paul's kid at the press conference was awesome. Yeah. Uh, Riley Curry at the press conference. She became like a star. Did, and then there was that anti Riley Curry stance that was the weirdest thing in the world. Like people were just mad at the four year old. It's like you going viral, just people fighting. Yeah, and there was no reason for it. It was funny. <laughs> it was lighthearted. It, it's not that serious. Yeah. All right, third one: Empire State Building oh. lights up, Eagles green. People in New York were pissed about this, which I don't understand because nobody in nobody fo- in the football teams play in New York. So, like, why would you be mad at the Empire State Building? That's right. I'd be like, if, if now if Newark, New Jersey had a skyscraper that turned, you know, bright green or a skyscraper, I don't know if there's skyscrapers in Hoboken, never been there, then there's, you have a problem. There's only one technical New York football team, and it is the Buffalo Bills. Um, but yeah, I, I don't I don't understand the controversy on this. They also lit up red and gold for the Chiefs as well. And yeah. so it's it was just a thing that they were doing. Um, but yeah, people were were very upset about that. But you know what? Cry harder. Yeah. And they do, happen, I think they do it for two weeks. To tell you. Yeah. And I think they do it for every team just as a thing. It yeah. just looks weird. The optics of it look weird because it's a rival. Like imagine if the Comcast Tower went like blue and white for the Giants <laughs> or something. You know, people would be people would be climbing all of the SEPTA yeah. bus things. You know, what do we call those things? By the way? Is it a bus shelter? A bus stop shelter? Okay. All right. Yeah. But yeah, yeah that's it. Was just it's just funky. It's like, oh, the Chiefs, nobody cares. But it's like, oh, it's the Eagles. Uh, you know, yeah. So. Well, then, I mean, that's the thing. That's the difference between the Empire State Building and Comcast, right? Because they, we would never do that here. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter because it doesn't matter yeah. who wins. Doesn't matter if it's a rival or not. There's never going to be another color in the skyline except for a Philadelphia team. So that's just not even. I don't even yeah. know why they they're doing that in the first place. To be cute, I, I don't. Yeah, it's weird. Well, yeah, right, I mean, I guess. We'll see if they do it next year. <laughs> yeah, they're, yeah, they're very, they're very. In two weeks, it's going to be green again. So yeah. pe- people in New York better get used to it. Now, it'd be really funny if like people like started cutting the cord because uh, the Comcast building went like red, blue, and white for like the, the Giants or something like that. But, like, there was an I'd uptick rather in- live off the grid and pay for Veri- or pay for Verizon. Yeah, Fios got a bunch of new subscribers <laughs> today. I wonder, wonder why. I know. <laughs> That's why they will never do it because I, I would not put it past the greater Philadelphia area to actually hold that threat. Absolutely. (laughs) All right. So this one, we can't show the video, but we can, we can show a picture. Um, This was probably the craziest moment. I think on the, uh, on broad street, Craig, if you got it for me, my man going pantsless on another bus stop shelter. could. Well, I'm glad you didn't. Um, (laughs) I'll tell you what that football Way too big. <laughs> <laughs> the football did not need to be that big. I'll tell you that. Now, it was cold, so I, I won't throw my man under the bus. But uh, if any bus stop shelter roof should have collapsed, it should have been this guy's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean. Go ahead, Breland. You seem like you got some thoughts. It's bold, but I, I just. Why? Why? Yeah. Yeah. What's the, what's, what is the, uh, the net positive here? You know, now you're, now your picture is everywhere. And, uh, I don't see any pot. I mean, maybe in that very moment, the brief five seconds, but you're even traumatizing the people that are there in yeah. life watching it. And then it goes viral. And then yeah. like, wh- where does this person work? Seemed yeah. like a good idea. seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> Yeah. Just stick right. to eating horse shit, please, people. Just just stick to doing that. Stop with the yeah. stop with the public indecency. Um, especially especially when you're showing more Boston Scott than you're showing Jalen Hurts. Oh. No. <laughs> let's let's go to let's go to let's the, go to number five. Let's move it on to the next <laughs> one. Yeah. This one was this one was really cool. This was like a cinematic adventure. Oh. Um guy throws his phone to a dude on a light pole. Yes. And 
you just get this beautiful landscape. And I have a hot take. I think this NFC Championship celebration was crazier than 2018. Now I li- I, I I went to both, but the just the let's get a full screen on that, Craig, if you can. Um, just the amount of people going yeah. every which way, going from 15th to City Hall, going all the way up to like Walnut Street and stuff. I just holy hell! I, I don't remember it being like this in 2018. And this is what I'm talking about. This does not. This does not occur. In Kansas City, I have never ever seen this in any market. Well, the, when I covered the Bills, they didn't really have a ton to celebrate. They broke the playoff drought, and that, but it wasn't. It was never this level of celebration. And the fact that Philly just continues to do this, it, it's mind blowing. I love mm-hmm. this. What a cool. Yeah. Also, what a cool idea. I'm surprised that no one has decided to do a GoPro or something on. Uh, on one of those light poles. Yeah, I mean, we've got the pole climbers like plenty of times before, but I've never like seen a shot like this from right. any of them being up there, you know? Yeah. I really like that. Someone goes before the game, straps a GoPro, or gets there before the game's over, straps a GoPro to the top. And uh, I'll tell you what, though, those poles were greased. In 18, I feel like everybody was up on poles. There was like, we were watching this one dude, and it was like, we were like, kind of like, uh, uh, like like a like the golfer, um, like the leader in the clubhouse. Like you were yeah. like just like you know how like when uh, they take off the thing at the Masters and they bring it down to the guy who's in second, they put the other guys first. Like we were just watching these guys like go up the pole. Like one guy got halfway. Okay, one guy got three quarters. Oh my god, that's a leader in the clubhouse. He touched the top. He touched the top. But man, people were getting up like halfway and just sliding down. One dude had like hands just covered in like black. And I was like, what happened? He goes, I climbed a pole. I climbed a pole. And I was like, holy hell! I didn't know the grease was like like that. Oh, so this was like an elite sport at this point, mm-hmm. getting up there. Wow, I wonder if people train for this. <laughs> I, need, I need an expose on what it takes to climb up a pole. I wouldn't do it even if there was no grease. But no uh, bus stop. Know how no. these people are getting up there with the grease being that thick. <laughs> no, I think uh, I think it's really cool too, being how like it's you know, five, six-ish years away from the last Super Bowl. So, like, kids that are in, like, college now that are 18, 19 years old, they were only in, like, starting high school or in eighth grade. So, like, I feel like there's, like, this new wave of, like, Eagles fans who are uh, who are experiencing, you know, something they couldn't experience when they were 13, 14 years old. Yeah, it's so much fun. I was talking to Brandon Graham, and he was telling me, he's like, one of my children who's running yeah. around in your feet right now, he wasn't born. He's only yeah. three. So, yeah. it's really cool to – have a new addition to the family this time around and have him experience it. Um, and he, he wasn't even here last time and his daughter um, was very little the first time. So it's, it's really cool to just see people who have not had the experience before get a chance to, to finally partake because it's fun. And I finally get to be here. I was in Buffalo last time and that obviously wasn't an exciting <sighs> time. I mean, they were happy for us because the Patriots, of course, what? but, it wasn't like this, so I'm excited to see this. Hey, what, what do you do if you're a if you're a Bills fan? I mean, you already did the four years of not winning the Super Bowl, you know, f- four straight times. You have this one of the best teams that you've had, you know, since Josh Allen's been there, and you you don't even make it to the conference championship. Like, uh, they're they're a they're a cursed fan base. Yeah, they should be used. I was gonna say they should be used to it. Four straight Super Bowls, no win. Um, always the bridesmaids, never the brides. And I love the Bills. Don't get me wrong. They are a phenomenal organization. I love them. I have friends on that team, especially because there are some Temple guys up there that I went to school with. But it's only going to get worse here in the AFC. So, um, yeah, a lot I, of guys I, that got to get paid too. Tell them, but yeah. All right. Um, last one for you here. I actually, we uh, changed courses here. I had a list of my, uh, cause uh, Breland is from Berks County. Shout out Berks County. Um, I had a list of my top 10 towns in Berks County. We can't find it. Um, I don't know. It like disappeared somewhere, but I think, I think, I think Boyertown was on there. Kutztown, uh, Reading. I think Oli might've made the list. We can't find it though. So you're but literally what, naming all 10 towns in Berks County. There may <laughs> only be 10 towns in Berks County. That's good. Wait, where did you go to high school up there? Muhlenberg. I went to Muhlenberg. Okay. Oh, okay. So north of, uh, like north of Reading near where the, uh, uh, like on the north north side, up from like the airport, yeah. Near the airport, Congratulations yeah. on getting out. 
I feel like everyone just goes right to the college, but you, you got out and congrats. It's like getting out of Scranton. I have a lot of buddies that got out of Scranton. Oh, that- <laughs> I still, you know, I pop in occasionally, but yeah, but this is, this is, it's funny. Cause this is, <clears throat> it's nice to talk to Breland in a setting. That's not a, a, a media game. Like a, we, the first thing we did was a, was the flag football game. And then I saw you at the union media yeah. game and we were like dog tired within two seconds they, they like ran us ragged before i think we even got onto the, the, the my personal favorite is that erica Shear from the union pr department went to jim curtain afterwards and was like hey um this was supposed to be fun and he's like i thought you wanted the, to give them a real experience i'm giving them a real experience we're running laps like yeah yeah no they want it's funny because they want like we go do the eagles flag football thing and it's just like here's some flags that right, we're gonna play you know yeah. And they go to, the, go to the union thing and it's like, hey, uh, yeah, here we are. So, uh, OK, so first of all, uh, uh, we have to give Breland credit here for setting a block. This is, this is her colleague, Chris O'Connell, almost messing up the toss right here. <laughs> um, but then you see Breland's, uh, Breland throws a block and kind of shields off that last person there for the uh, wow. for the touchdown. Run. It's like yeah. Jason Kelsey getting out of the stance and getting <laughs> getting five yards upfield. I have no idea. I've never played football before. Um, that was a whole new experience for me. It was fun. I would do it again. I don't. I would have to actually train to do the Union Fantasy Camp. It was so. It was so hard. Like I played soccer my entire life, but like I, I haven't done a lot. I'm like, I, I don't keep up. I got two little girls. It's like a pandemic. I gained twenty pounds. Like I'm not ready for all that right now. So I, I we go down and like Pagan. They give you the whole experience, right? So it's yeah. like, all right, we're gonna stretch now, and then we're gonna warm up, and now we're gonna run a couple laps or whatever. I was like out of breath before we even touched a soccer, it soccer like, ball. I feel like Jim Curtin was having an open tryout for people. He was. And some people were treating it like an open tryout. And uh, I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. How serious are we taking this? Because I'm just here for fun. I'm not yeah. here to tear an ACL. Yeah. yeah. Something. Like I have things to do after this. Like I am not here to, to treat it this intensely, but some people were yeah. like, going hard in the paint there and yeah I, like they thought they were gonna get like maybe a maybe a call for a tryout after yeah, that stuff and like get this get me. this on film the high we didn't get we got that touchdown run at the eagles game but craig was filming the union thing for me i think the biggest highlight was somebody kicked the ball off my face pat gallon kicked the ball off my face and it went into the net so that was like the only good like uh piece of piece of video that we got from that whole thing but it's <laughs> but it, it, it's nice to to talk to you in a setting that's not yeah, a really. not a media game yeah yeah We'll have to, you know, actually get together at some point. But there you go. Not there right you now, go. It, I feel like this fall winter has been fun, but ma- like magical, but just a grind, a grind. I know the last. I know the last. I mean, because we really didn't even, you know, because the Eagles were undefeated when the Phillies were in the World Series, and I was like, holy cow! I think I've worked like twenty-seven days in a row here or something. Nope. This is crazy, but it's good. I would take that. I would take that any day of the uh, week if it means that the teams are good and oh, absolutely everybody's happy yeah. Oh, yeah really i got one more for you before you let you go is that cool yeah all right so you were who to the owl i was that's crazy to me <laughs> that's that's crazy that anyone anyone would subject themselves to that hot costume man and... half tuition scholarship come on really? oh yeah there's okay, so i knew i knew the penn state lion got like full tuition I didn't know if Temple and Hooter and all that stuff. I didn't know if you guys got those kind of benefits. So I liked it. Okay. Back in my day, St. Joe's also had full tuition, but we got half, um, which is, I I think, I totally. Yeah. 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 There there are some programs, Notre Dame, that does not give anything. Um, Wait, Notre Dame doesn't give anything for the leprechaun? No, I remember we were there at Notre Notre Dame. Temple played Notre Dame in the season opener. And it was so hot. It was like 105 degree heat index. And I'm sitting there with the leprechaun and we both have our like costumes off or whatever during halftime. And I'm like guzzling water. And I'm like, man, the, the, these are the days that you're just grateful that you have a very substantial scholarship. And he's like, you what? I'm like, yeah, you know, the scholarship that you get for doing this. And he's like, you get money? I just do it for the love of the game. I'm like, dog. <laughs> you're an idiot. <laughs> Wow. You you then. Uh, yeah. Let me not let me not mess up like the bag here for you. Well, I should have been the I should have been the mountaineer then because all I would have had to do is put on like the coonskin hat and hold the rifle and like you don't even really have to dress up, you know. You just like we score a touchdown, you shoot the rifle off and that's Yeah, yeah this has been done. But um we're tired so- now. We're, we're done. Wait, sorry. What was your question? We're no, off. yeah, no, it's fine. No, me and my buddies. So we loved Hooter's birthday. We didn't love it because it was Hooter's birthday. 
We loved it because the array of mascots that they like hire to come on is so weird to me that like <laughs> you got Elsa right here. You've got the Hatfield Dollar Dog Night Pig. You got this this thing back here. I think it's like a Nemer's Buddy mascot all the way in the back. There's a a, a blue dog, Elise Hoagie Shack, like mascots that you've never, ever seen or will never, ever see in your life. They all go to Hooters' birthday. Now, you have your Franklins, you have your Philly Fanatic, you have your Gritty, but then you also have this this blue-looking like geisha in the back, and it's like, wh- where do they find these mascots and who hired them? So that big one behind um, the baker, the yeah. big, the big blue guy, that's Boomer from the Trenton Thunder. See the Trenton Thunder? I just like, <laughs> like, why does the Trenton Thunder mascot have to come all the way from Trenton for Hooters' birthday? I love that he comes for Hooters' birthday, but we just invited like anybody who wanted to come. And when I was there, because I had been the mascot at the Reading Phillies. And I was doing appearances for the Reading Royals as well. So they, the Reading Phillies and the Reading Royals would both send. And in addition to like everybody. And then I had just random friends. Um, I was friends with the Rucker Scarlet Knight. He would show up. Who is now a prominent mascot here in Philadelphia. I don't what? know. I shouldn't say who it is. Fine. Um, but, you know, so all of my little friends would just show up. So it'd be like a random hodgepodge of people. We Wait, does that say the wings like I RIP Mad Dog? He's does that say it. super pretzel? Is that the super pretzel yes. mascot back then? <laughs> oh my god, yeah, I didn't even yeah, see the bro. super pretzel. <laughs> I, this is, wants to show up, you got a costume. The Philadelphia Soul guys in the back. Oh my god, Soul Man. Yeah, Soul Soul man. Man. I was uh, real pissed though because my senior year, I it was so special to me to have everyone there, and I was so excited. And then the fanatic upstaged me by shooting like a half court shot and making it during the mascot basketball game. And I was, I was salty about that. I'm not even going to lie. It was cool. As, it was cool as shit, but I don't blame you that it was, it's your I, birthday. I was the star of my own show. Yeah, that's like proposing to like someone at a wedding. Like that's, that's yeah. not cool. Fanatic. You yeah, have you doing this. The fanatic has out. shined 364, 363 days of the year. Can Hooter just have a damn birthday? On my birthday, dog. You don't have to make a half court shot here, but it's fine. Wow. Everybody, and that's the only thing everyone was talking about for like the next week. You see, the fanatic made that. Sh- I was like, I saw it. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least you got half tuition. At least you got half tuition. So no, but yeah, we love Hooter's birthday just because we we just go to see who is uh, who they're gonna just run out there. Uh, you never, you never know what you're gonna get, and that's the that's a beautiful thing about it. I love that the mascots run tight. I love that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, we have a good little club going still to this day. Good. Well, Breland, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on. This was a lot of fun. Good luck in Arizona. Thank you. You're lucky Miami and Arizona. Who's got it better than you? I, I can't complain. I just I love that here. <laughs> enjoy, yeah. Enjoy the sun. Enjoy the. It's a dry heat, as I'm sure you know. Yes. Uh, it's probably beautiful in in, uh, in, uh, in, in February. So, yeah, but thank you so much for coming on. And we'll be, uh, I know I'll be watching. So, good luck with everything. It'll be a fun one. Thanks, guys, yeah. for having me. Right. It. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. All right. Breland Moore, Fox 29 Sports Anchor. You got anything else? I Only thing I have left that we didn't get to, and I know it's 110, but the Arizona restaurant manager who warned his servers about Eagles fans. Did you see this? Yeah. I like, you know, it's funny because. Like at the end here. So, okay. I'll read the whole thing. This is from Bob Mayo. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen. The Village Tavern in Scottsdale. The Village uh, Tavern in Scottsdale. The first team for the Super Bowl has just been decided. The Philadelphia Eagles and their fans will be in town to represent their city. With that being said, if any of you are from Philly, please don't take this the wrong way. But Philly fans are some of the most obnoxious, <laughs> rude fans in the country. Smiley face, smiley face. They're blue collar, hardworking people. They're very passionate and love their sports and teams and will be here to bask in the moment. As hospitality professionals, we need to make sure we show them a great time and make sure we prepare ourselves with their brashness, smiley face. They will probably be challenging, but we will show them a great time, Bob. Now, I mean, some people were like, oh, it's no big deal. He's just like, you know, they want they want us to come and whatever. But you have to you don't have to say that they're, uh, you know, obnoxious or whatever. <laughs> Don't say anything. If you don't have anything nice to say, Bob, don't say anything at all. Yeah, but the, I I worked in uh, I worked in bars for like eight years, bartender. This is a this is a perfect general manager email. This is a hundred yeah. percent general manager email. General managers love just like <clears throat> you always upset somebody in in uh, in in 
uh, service industry. Whenever they send out emails, it's like, don't take, it's always don't take this the wrong way, yeah. but like, here it comes. Yeah. Don't take this the wrong way, but you suck ass. <laughs> yeah. Don't take, Hey, listen, don't take this the wrong way, but you can't serve for jack shit. And yeah. stuff. So it's not general managers. Nothing. They're the bad guys, though. They are the bad guys, and they have to be the bad guys. So yeah. you know, it kind of just comes to the territory. But call, yeah, calling up obnoxious or rude, and then trying to like, then you know, tell us that we're like blue collar and hardworking as like a compliment. It's like just doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. Listen, I nothing kinda... personal. Nothing personal, but you guys are a bunch of assholes. <laughs> <laughs> smiley face smiley face <laughs> smiley face they're a bunch two of two smiley faces area. in case the, yeah. yeah in case the first one didn't go i was a little soft on the guy because i kind of wanted i love eagles fans uh, i i think eagles fans are the type of people who will give you the shirt off your back uh, i've done a lot of research on this in the lots um you know that people are just like really not you don't understand eagles fans until you get to know eagles fans so i like i actually wanted people to go to the village tavern in scottsdale spend their money there and you know show bob that we're like great people i i honestly believe people that think eagles fans are obnoxious and rude have only seen videos on the internet and not have yeah. uh, ever experienced a, an eagles fan in their lifetime so we'll hey if you're going out there and you listen to this go see the village tavern in scottsdale or don't i'm sure there's some philly centric bars like i think there's one called the rock bar in scottsdale that's a philly's bar that a lot of the uh, tailgates go to go to that instead patronize that so I'm going to have to get Bob Mayo on the crossing broadcast. Yeah. Bob, why do you hate Robert, Robert Mayo? Yeah. Why do you hate? <laughs> hey, welcome to the program. Why do you hate us? All right. <laughs> see ya. And then we pull the plug on him, you know, yeah. cut his mic. <laughs> oh man. All right. Wow. Well, Hey, you got anything else? No, it's a good show. Go birds. We're in the Super Bowl, man. Holy shit. Yeah. yeah. Now you're not going to be here Thursday, right? Uh, debatable. We are, we oh. are still waiting for, uh, media passes for the super bowl okay. opening night we'll see okay if anyone listens what, to about this, the, know. what about the other thing you still going up to uh the other uh thing? I, we were planning on going to punks tawny that's kind of on the back burner right now because you can't really okay. do both so pagan anyway. may or may not be on the show on thursday yeah yeah okay. and if anyone thursday. in the uh, that listens to this has a uh has a source in the league office that can get us you know media passes a lot easier on uh for opening night uh, of the super bowl for media day that would be welcomed uh please hit us at uh at kyle pagan cb or at kevin underscore kincaid or at crossing broad wherever you get your social media channels thank you to breland moore thank you to kevin kincaid thank you to craig on Look the how one flat this ball is the flate gate yeah yeah that is tom brady yes tom brady would really be good at gripping that i can really grip it though i'll tell you that much no no wonder he did it we gotta send that out to we gotta send that out to Arizona. See if the see if Jalen. I wonder what kind of PSI Jalen has on his balls. Um, bigger balls than that guy on the bus shelter. I'll tell you that. Holy <laughs> shit! Talk about sh- shrinkage. Talk about maybe just a micro penis too. Anyway, maybe he was, maybe he was in the pool before. <laughs> yeah, maybe he was in the pool. <laughs> anyway, that is the show for today. Thank you to everybody for tuning in. Go birds, Super Bowl bound. We'll talk to you Thursday. <laughs>